Now let's take a look at the relationships between all the classes. To do that, let's add an edge between each class and its direct superclasses. This gives a directed acyclic graph called the inheritance hierarchy. Now we know how to define a class that inherits from one class. We devoted quite a bit of time to that, but how can a class inherit from more than one multiple inheritance? Because each of those two superclasses has its own semantics and set of things. How can we merge those together? Uh, in fact, it seems complicated, and it is complicated, but it can be a powerful tool. And different systems either allow or, not, or do not allow multiple inheritance. But if you want a very good discussion of what is possible in multiple inheritance, we recommend the book Object-Oriented Software Construction by Bertrand Meyer, Prentice Hall, 1997. So here's a simple example of multiple inheritance that works well. Here on the left, we have a set of classes that implement geometric figures, uh, lines, circles, and so on. And each one of them has a method draw. Remember, we did something similar before. Here on the right, we have a class that implements linked lists, a list of elements. We can add thing, things to this list. We can traverse the list. We have a method for all that invokes the method M on all elements of a linked list. From these two, we can define by multiple inheritance compound figures. Compound figure inheritance from, inherits from figure and from linked list. Now notice here we have defined the method draw. The method draw, just like all figures which have method draw. And in order to define method draw, we use the method for all, for all which comes from linked list. And the argument here is draw because each of the figures is going to be used as a figure. Notice how this method draw draws from both, both superclasses, linked lists, and geometric figures. So a compound figure is both a figure and a linked list. In fact, multiple inheritance works in this example because the two superclasses, geometric figures and linked lists, are independent. Now, Java only allows single inheritance for classes. In fact, it forbids multiple inheritance for classes, but as we saw, that it can be expressive to have multiple inheritance. So to keep some of that expressiveness, Java introduces a concept called an interface. Uh, this is a kind of reuse of the word interface to mean something very specific in terms of object-oriented programming in Java. So in, in Java, an interface is similar to an abstract class with no method implementations. In fact, it only has the method names and their argument types and no implementation. It's like an empty shell. And then Java says, we do allow multiple inheritance for interfaces, okay? So here's an example of a Java interface. The interface lookup, lookup is an interface which has a method find, which takes a string and returns an object. So any class of this form can be seen as an implementation of lookup. And we can enforce this by saying, for example, class simple lookup implements lookup. And here we define a class that will look up an object in a list of objects indexed by string names. And so with the, the syntax implements lookup, it's not inheritance, but it is saying that the class simple lookup, that its methods obey a certain constraint. It has this shape, the shape of the interface. Okay. Now, let's see how this, this works with multiple inheritance. So here's an example of what's called the diamond problem. This is a classic problem, one of the many problems with multiple inheritance, if you do it naively. So here we have a class Z. Z inherits from X and also from Y. X inherits from W, and Y inherits from W. So you notice that X and Y both inherit from the same class. Now the question is, if class W has attributes, if it has state, who will initialize them? Will it be initialized through 
x or through y or both or what or maybe the two initializations are not compatible see it's a classic example of conflict resolution reconciliation there is no simple solution to this solution depends on the semantics of what the classes are supposed to be doing now because of this and for other reasons multiple inheritance is not allowed in java so so how do interfaces help here well let's take a look here's an example where w and x are interfaces they're not classes so this is the same diamond shape but there is no more diamond inheritance because class z only inherits from y that's the only class inheritance there is so there's no multiple inheritance and because we're an interface inheritance is just a constraint on the method headers well x and w here they just give constraints for z and y so z and y just to have to have to have certain methods with certain arguments to satisfy these constraints so if you have multiple inheritances it just means more constraints maybe you need more methods okay since an interface contains no code there is no diamond problem uh, in this particular solution x and w are interfaces uh, and here's the syntax for it so interface w interface x extends w uh, extends is used when both uh, arguments are of the same or either interfaces or classes class y implements w implements the interface and class z extends y and implements x that's the java syntax for this solution here's another solution in this other solution both x and y and w are all interfaces and there's only one class in the whole hierarchy which is z so this has the following syntax interface w interface x extends w interface y extends w and class z implements x and y and this is another solution to the diamond example i gave you and for this particular example can you come up with any further solutions any other patterns of classes and interface that will solve this problem